I, Harold Washington, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States. In America, 29 votes is more than 21 votes. He won Harold here, too, but he ran away. You have my pledge that I will fulfill my responsibility. A Channel 2 News special. Mayor Washington, 100 days later. Mayor Washington, are the people of this city better off now that you're mayor? Oh, definitely. Why? For several reasons. One, I think they've seen a look at government they wanted, anticipated, never got. Now they're getting it. Two, I think the controversy and the things we've done have opened people's eyes as to what can be done. Three, I think they have, for the first time in my lifetime, a legislative body named the council, which is working. Uh, they have a mayor who uh, is living up to his responsibilities as a chief executive and trying to work with the council on the concept of separation of powers, not antagonistically, but in terms of oversight and accountability. Mayor Washington has been in office now for 100 days. Tonight we will ask the people themselves how the mayor is doing. We will find out what they expect from the mayor in the days ahead. And we'll have results from our exclusive Channel 2 Chicago Sun-Times News poll on the mayor's first 100 days. The results are very interesting. Mike Flannery will be joining me in questioning the mayor and talking about the issues that face the city. Well, Don, Chicago has always been a city of neighborhoods, perhaps more so, in fact, than any other city in the country. So we went back to those neighborhoods to ask some questions to see what the people think of Mayor Washington's first 100 days in office. Ready. This city will never be the same again. It was out in the neighborhoods where the political movement was born that sent Harold Washington downtown to City Hall. I'm worried about the city of Chicago and the 47th Ward. But it is also out in the neighborhoods other neighborhoods that the opposition to Washington has had some of its strongest roots. But there are signs that while the mayor's support in black neighborhoods remains extraordinarily strong, white Chicagoans are warming up to Harold Washington the man. An increasing number of white voters, more than a third in fact, now say they like the mayor personally, according to a Channel 2 Sun-Times news poll. Even more dramatic? Only 27% of whites now hold an unfavorable opinion of Washington as a person, compared to 45% before the election. But while white voters seem to be warming up to Washington's personality, a lot of them, and a surprising number of black voters, are still uncertain about just how good a mayor Washington really will be. Only 37% of all voters approve of the job Washington is doing. 20% disapprove, and fully 43% say they have no opinion. There is great racial polarization on this question. 18% of white voters approve of the mayor's job performance. 64% of black voters. The difference in opinion is reflected in the neighborhoods. I like to know what is he going to do about the south side neighborhoods, some of the slums. Well, for the neighborhoods that, are, that aren't uh, hurting, how, what's, what's the mayor going to do to help improve these? Will he be spending the same amount of money out here? What about the transportation to downtown from the southwest area? Nobody has ever done anything for, uh, for us people out here. So why? Let's see what he can do. It's real important that that for sale sign ban remain intact so that the neighborhoods can be protected from neighborhood change or from real estate people creating the neighborhood change. I would tell you that you're doing a good job so far and that uh, the people of Chicago, they're watching you and hope, hopefully that you'll continue doing the job that you're doing. Is my neighborhood going to be the same one year from today that it is today? That's the only thing I can ask. Well, Mayor Washington, what are you going to do to allay the fears of people like that man? Well, uh, we've already done it. We ran on a strong and vigorous campaign making it clear that neighborhoods and the development, redevelopment, and the strengthening of those neighborhoods was one of our prime concerns. And we found out, and these questions illustrated, that this is a concern throughout the entire city. And as you go through every neighborhood, you hear the same questions. 
What about our city services? We're going to improve them. We've already done so. We've reorganized streets and sanitation. We've reorganized, we're in the process of reorganizing the sewer department. We have improved the pickup of the garbage. There's no question about it. And even though, even though we've had to cut down some employees in those areas which were over budgeted, uh, we have made it very clear uh, that in terms of economic development, there will be balanced growth in this city. By that I mean we will not eschew and overlook downtown. We, for the first time, will incorporate into the uh, governmental pro process of uh, revenue bonds and general obligation bonds, neighborhoods. For example, we started off, as you recall, and diverted, redirected 10% of the community development block grant funds to the tune of $13.3 million with the consent of the council back into the neighborhood. Mr. Mayor, l l let's get down, though, to a really gut-level issue that was clearly behind some of those comments made by the folks. The racial emotion that has been stirred up, was stirred up during the campaign, still seems to be out there to some extent. How has that affected the job you've done? Has it made it more difficult for you? Has it made it easier in any way for you? What's happened out there? First of all, it's not affected me at all. I'm still determined to do my job as I spell it out. It has made it somewhat difficult, not in terms of my programs, what we propose to do. It has made it difficult in formulation of the city council. That's where we found the results of it. But we're concerned about neighborhoods. We're opposed, absolutely opposed, to blockbusting, and we're going to try to completely abolish that form. Even though there's some doubt as to whether or not the for sale sign prohibition is constitutional, we will enforce the law until it is declared unconstitutional. We're not about to try to scare people out or let other people do the same thing as long as we have the legal tools to do that. But the law is the law. It's got to be followed. Judge Aspen made it very clear where he stood. I made it very clear that the role of site selection, I'll bring it into it because it belongs here, the role of site selection now rests with the Federal District Court. This is the CHA Public Housing Authority. Housing Authority being the agent to carry out that law. That is the law, and it's been unfortunate that past mayors have deliberately obfuscated this whole business by giving the impression they could change the law when actually they cannot. We're going to obey the law, but in the same process, we're going to protect neighborhoods. We're not going to let people be the victims of rapacious real estate brokers who simply want to sell property. We should mention that the uh, margin of error in our news poll is a plus or minus 6%. In a minute, more intriguing results from that exclusive Channel 2 Sun-Times news poll and a look at what the people told us is the number one issue facing this city. According to our exclusive news poll, 76% of the people agree with the statement Mayor Washington has inherited serious financial problems from previous administrations. Good housing, health care and schools, safe streets, these are all important issues to the people of Chicago. But from all over the city, community leaders we talked to said one issue overshadows all the others in importance. Maybe the biggest problem facing the city and the mayor. I think jobs is the major concern of the whole city. I mean, it, it, everything relates to jobs. A lot of their concerns is jobs. Are there going to be more jobs? We need more jobs. Would there be more jobs opening up? To everybody, teenagers as well as older people. One of our biggest uh, problems, if not the, big, the biggest one, is the unemployment in our community. During the primary campaign, Harold Washington knew that jobs were critical to the city and were an important election issue. So he promised to do something about putting people to work. Our new corporation will help retain and create 10,000 jobs. But many people feel Mayor Washington has done nothing about jobs in Chicago. A hundred days after taking office, the mayor has yet to unveil his economic development plans that would provide jobs through private business. And to make things worse, the city is now putting people out of work to save its own money. Our Channel 2 News Sun-Times News poll shows 44% of the people approve of Mayor Washington's move to lay off city workers, while 46% disapprove. My name is Jerry Lascola and I live on the west side of Chicago. And I'd like to know how come Mayor Washington's laying off all the city workers and forcing them out of office and jobs. During the election, you knew jobs was a big election issue. Uh, you were talking about creating 10,000 new jobs, and yet the city, one of the city's biggest employers, is now laying people off. Well, in the first place, we made it very clear that there would be some people who would be laid off because 
During the last four or five months of Burns' administration, she went over budget and hired people for obvious political purposes, and they had to be left off, and they were let off. The recent problem is simply this. We have not threatened to lay people off. We have gone to the city council with a financial plan and said, if you will not give the $22 million tax rebate and, re and, and, and reinstitute it, we will have it, be able to balance the budget for 83 and look into 84 with some degree of certainty as to be able to balance it then. These, these so, 10,000 jobs that you mentioned during that one debate, where, where do people line up to apply for these 10,000 well, jobs? That's quite that simple. We approach this thing in two ways. One, we've said that insofar as this city is concerned, it would balance the distribution of jobs equitably and fairly. For example, in the summer youth employment, for the first time, instead of arbitrarily picking people to go to work, we had a lottery system, which meant that the jobs were fairly dispersed. We maintained that the existing jobs in the city, to the extent that we could afford those jobs, would be fairly distributed. That's why we fought the passion system. That's why we supported the Shackman decree. And that's why Judge Bull was so laudatory in his remarks about us. We also said, however, that it's the responsibility of this city not to resolve the unemployment question. We can't do that. Mr. Reagan can't do that, it seems. We would just cooperate with it. What we're doing is trying to restructure the economic development of this city, synchronize planning, economic development, housing, and job training to maintain the jobs that we have and to attract additional business. We're going to do that. Mr. Mayor, of course, there's another issue that registers very strongly in viewer opinion and voter opinion in the poll that we took, and of course, that's the fight in the city council. 35% of those polled approve of the way that you are handling the council dispute. But 43% disapprove, and 21% have no opinion. Here is what the people in the neighborhoods are saying. If they don't work closer together, uh, we're not going to get anything done in the city. Is it really necessary for him and Vidoliak to, you know, really be going through these changes? You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a lot of changes they're going through, and by, by the changes that they're going through, it's hurting us. Instead of worrying about two different factions between the 29 faction and the his faction, just get down to business and do something for the people. It's a mess, you know, if him and Rodoliak don't, you know, negotiate and get um, anything together, then the city would just be a mess and he will just spend his whole year, four years in office not doing a thing, just fighting. Well, why don't they settle it once and for all? There's other problems there, you know, they got to take care of the city instead of arguing all the time. Say they'll never build once they pull in the power from each other. They have to come together and compromise something. You can't run anything fighting each other, can you? All right. How is he going to straighten it out? He's got to straighten it out. Well, I'd like to ask him what he could, what he thinks he might be able to accomplish if he could ever get the Rodoli Act 29 to cooperate. Well, Mr. Mayor, how will the city function in this atmosphere of confrontation? Well, the city is functioning. We don't want the fight. Frankly, even though people may not see it that way, we didn't ask for the fight, but since we have it, we have to deal with it. Specifically, what, I is, have made blocking, it clear, what is blocking a compromise? Well, that's what I'd like to know, but let's make one other thing clear first, because that's the nub of these questions. Government has not been slowed to a halt. Everything that we have asked for emergency and non has gone to that council almost without change and the council has even cooperated with us in diverting 13.5 million CD dollars back into the neighborhood so the council has done its job up to a point and the mayor has done his job the impression is that government has been ground to a halt because of it it's not true I can, only recall, I can only recall one instance in which the council with malice of forethought blocked something I was there last week with their sign on for the Chicago Fest, which I thought was important. We can't afford to just give uh, uh, Festivals Inc. $450,000. Uh, members of the council didn't show up. Strange thing happened in the media. I was blamed because the council didn't show up. I didn't elect these people. I don't pay them. They were AWOL. They didn't show up for work, but I was blamed for it. But go back to it. The council is functioning on matters important to the city, and nothing has been blocked. What can stop it? the realization on the part of certain members of the council that there has been a change. People voted for that change. They want that change. They want an open government. They want a council that is a real council. That will stop it. Mr. Mayor, after a break, we'll look at how the city council dispute has affected your ability to reform city government. According to our news poll, in the city council dispute, 28% of the people side with the Verdoli Act 29. 46% 
Side with Mayor Washington. The word reform has been a popular one in Chicago politics for decades. But there are those who say that to reform city government is not necessarily to improve it. Mayor Washington, as you've heard, insists that it is time now for reform. And he has vowed to implement a reform agenda since the very first day he took office. Help me institute reforms and bring about the revival and renewal of this great city while there is still time. Business as usual will not be accepted by any part of this city. Business as usual will not be accepted by this chief executive of this great city. Both before and after his inauguration 100 days ago, Harold Washington made a lot of promises about reform at City Hall. But will the mayor be able to keep those promises? Nearly half the voters questioned in our Channel 2 Sun-Times News poll, 49%, think he will reform city government. However, there is much more skepticism among whites than among blacks. 33% of white voters or only one out of three, agree that the mayor will reform city government. But 72% of blacks, or nearly three out of four, think that he will. Indeed, Washington is already moving on some of his major reform proposals, agreeing in federal court to prohibit political hiring or firing of the vast majority of city employees, drafting an executive order on freedom of information at City Hall, severely limiting the amount of money that city contractors can contribute to his political fund and helping to open up the city's budget-making process. When will you recognize this? You're out of order, Mr. Dillon. When will you recognize this whole procedure? is out of order the way you're conducting that chair. But when the mayor brought his style of reform to the city council, there was a political explosion, an explosion that split the aldermen into two warring camps. A 29-member majority led by Edward Verdoliak and a minority supporting the mayor. Almost everything else that has happened in Harold Washington's first hundred days has been overshadowed by that bitter battle in the council. Both factions in the council uh, have not in every case acted responsibly, and I'm not particularly happy about that. Well, in city government, we finally have uh, a democracy. We have a uh, real balance of power. Uh, system of checks and balances. We have uh, a give and take between the executive and legislative branches of government. I think that it has been a very exciting, very interesting, sometimes frustrates, frustrating, but nevertheless uh, progressive three months. Well, Mr. Mayor, whether or not it's been progressive, a lot of people think that some of the reforms that you've instituted, particularly getting rid of patronage or limiting patronage, is weakening your political power to get other reforms through. Isn't that true? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, I take this opportunity to declare publicly victory. We have opened up the city council as we said we would. I have a witness, Mr. Burke, who says now we have a separation of powers. We have a council which is oversighting and, and making accountable the mayor. That's what we wanted. That's what we got. There is a price to pay for that is the price that you don't have control of the council and you don't oh, have full control of city government. I have control of city government. There's no question about that. That's never been debatable. That's not the issue. I don't have control of the city council. I don't want control of the city council. That's what the fight was all about. That was the reform that ushered in Mayor Byrne and she wouldn't institute it, so I'm sitting in her place instead. We're going to have a reform city council. It's going to come about. But I don't want to control the city council. I want the city fathers, all 50 of them, to do their job as this, this chief executive is doing his job. I want oversight, not obstructionism, not standing in the way, but cooperation, and we're getting it. Some of your supporters have said that they don't like what you've done with patronage. They want you to keep that in effect. They don't like this Shackman ruling. They want you to get rid of the old guard and put them in, give them those jobs. Patronage is dead. I stomped on his grave, and I assure you it's not alive, and it's never going to be resurrected during the 20 years I'm in office. It's gone. People ask me to get rid of it overwhelmingly, more than 70%. Many people who didn't vote for me, probably never would vote for me, were opposed to the passionate system. It's gone. There are no spoils. The right question to ask this mayor is what can you do to uplift the level of the human condition for people in this city? And you get all kinds of responses you want. The people who will work for this city will be people who have the qualifications to work for the city, be they black, white, male, female, Hispanic across the board. Still ahead, a look at the next 100 days and beyond. Bernard Epton received 48% of the vote in the general election against Harold Washington. 
Now, in our news poll, only 24% of the voters admitted they voted for Epton. Mayor Washington's been in office for 100 days. More than 1,300 remain. Here are some suggestions for the mayor from community leaders and political leaders. I think one thing he might do in the future is not uh, tip his hand. I think he should uh, kind of sit back and reassess where he's going and put out a game plan. The staff of the mayor has to work extremely hard especially with a slightly recalcitrant city council. Stand firm. You are the mayor. And uh, people put you there based on uh, your campaign. Stand firm. Hang tough. That he's done a, a great job so far. And hang tough. And don't give in to the opposition forces. Every mayor has his first hundred days. Every mayor has to, or her, has to do what they think is right. And I think that you just have to wait and see. Every mayor gets that opportunity. Mayor, you've got 100 days behind you. Any promises for the next 100 and beyond? Well, if, if you promise me I'll get at least a two-day honeymoon, I'll tell you anything. You, we, we got conflicting advice there. One said, uh, don't tip your hand. The other one said, have a game plan. I think the truth is in between. Some things we discuss, some we don't. Our game plan is clear. Uh, we came out with it in our Washington papers. We repeated it every day. We have done everything we said we would do. And I think people are becoming convinced in the city that when we say something, we mean it. We have told the city council that the city has a shortfall in dollars. We didn't create it, but we're not going to cry about that. We've come up with a financial plan. We have presented that plan to the council. The council can resolve it by giving us the monies that we need and solving the question of layoffs. If we do not get those monies, then we unfortunately, in terms of the solvency of this city and our credibility must lay people Mr. Off. Mayor, on a personal note for the future, uh, do you have any marriage plans? Uh, have you set a date with your fiancée, Mary Ellis Smith? Oh, be there a man with soul so dead who never to himself has said, I must get married and married soon. We have uh, marriage plans. We will be happily married very soon. Don't rush it. I don't want to take my bride all of these tremendous problems that they've heaped upon me. I want her to have a quiescent, growing, blossoming city. I am guaranteed her that. When I ask for her hand, I'm going to give her that. Thank you, Mayor Washington, for joining us tonight. It's a real pleasure. And thank you for being with us for a look at Mayor Washington 100 days later. Good night. Good night.